Welcome back to the Research Finance Education Series. This video will explain the what, why, and how of using the Expense Report Management System for staff with employee IDs when submitting expense reimbursements. What is Expense Report Management System, or ERMS? The Expense Report Management System is a web-based application where staff with employee IDs can prepare employee reimbursement requests to finance. Once the payment lead sheet has been completed in ERMS, employees can download the payment lead sheet in PDF format, embed digital receipts to it, and obtain manager approval. The approved payment lead sheet and backup are sent to Research Finance. Once submitted, employees can track the status of their forms within ERMS. If the payment request is compliant, the request will be submitted to Accounts Payable and reimbursed electronically with your salary. If there are issues, an email will be sent to the requester detailing the issues. Why is using ERMS important? Using ERMS will ensure quicker payment times for your reimbursement. Each submission will be linked to your employee ID and banking information. It also provides the ability to track your payment status through ERMS. Who can use ERMS? Staff with employee IDs are able to use ERMS for their expense reimbursements. People in groups who cannot use ERMS include external vendors or individuals who do not have employee IDs. Required backup. It is important to ensure you provide the appropriate backup when submitting your expense reimbursement. Please review the mentioned policies and videos to ensure the backup is available for the type of expense. I'll now walk you through how to proceed with the ERMS uh, website. Uh, the ERMS uh, URL will be provided at the bottom of this video. When you first get to the ERMS homepage, you will log in with your login credentials. The first time you log in into ERMS, you will have no previous requisitions to view. I will go through each of these columns to detail what they mean. RQ number. This is a requisition number that is automatically generated for you. The VER or version number is an auto-generated number to indicate the version of your requisition. This version no number will change if you have submitted your form, but subsequently change it back to draft to edit mode. Status. This field will indicate which stage your reimbursement is in. A description of each status type is provided here. Draft. A requisition form has been started and saved without submitting. Submitted. The user's manager has reviewed the hard copy form along with the backup and has signed it off. Pending validation. Accounts payable or research finance is currently reviewing the form. Users will not be able to make any changes to their form at this time. Rejected. Accounts payable or research finance has reviewed the form and has rejected the form. Approved. Accounts payable or research finance has reviewed the form and have approved the form. Payment has been processed. Complete. The form has been uploaded to the general ledger. Employee number. The employee ID number of the user who will be reimbursed. Submit date. The date that the reimbursement form has been submitted. Payable to. The name of the user who will be reimbursed. Total. Total amount of the reimbursement form. Authorizer, the name of the individual that is approving the form. Requester, the name of the individual that is preparing the form. And actions, a magnifying glass may, may be clicked on to view a requisition regardless of the status. The following is how your screen may look after many reimbursement requests have been submitted. To create a new requisition, click on New Requisition button. 
you will be redirected to the following page. Complete the form and click Save to proceed. All fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory. We first start by the employee ID. Enter the ID of the employee who will be reimbursed. Table 2. This field will be pre-populated based on the network credentials used at time of login. Street 1. Enter your home mailing address. Be sure not to include 30 bond or your work address. Street 2 is an optional field and may be used if necessary. City. Enter the city that coincides with your home mailing address. Postal code. Please enter your home postal code. Office telephone. Enter your office phone number in case accounts payable or research finance need to follow up with you. Extension. Please enter your office extension. Authorized by. Enter the first and last name of the manager authorized to approve the, the activity to which expenses are to be charged. Authorizer's job title. Enter the job title of the authorizer. Next, click Save. Once you have clicked Save, you will be brought to the following screen. A requisition number will be automatically generated and the status will be in draft. The information provided earlier in the previous section will be saved to the main info tab. For each set of expenses claimed, you must enter the company code, and the accounting unit information. This will be determined on the activity you will be applying the expense to. Please note that only one accounting unit and activity can be used per requisition. If multiple activities are required to be used, a separate requisition is required. Continue completing the rest of the fields. All fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory. For illustration purposes, the documents have been pulled here. Enter the date which the expense was incurred. For illustration purposes, I will mention May 1st. Business purpose. Please explain why the expense was incurred. Expense code. From the drop down list, select the appropriate account. Currency. Select either CAD or other for foreign currency. Enter the pre tax amount. Enter the GST or HST amount. Total will be automatically calculated for you. Next, enter the activity that you will be applying this reimbursement to. Also, enter the accounting unit. Click 
on the Add Expense button to add an additional expense line. Continue filling out the fields. Please note, this field length is restricted to 35 characters only. After all the expenses have been entered, click the Save button to proceed. Once you click Save, you'll be brought to the following screen. If the, everything looks OK, you can click Submit. If you would like to make a change, you can click Edit. I will click Submit. And the payment release sheet for the requisition form has been created. Now you can save the document. Once you have the requisition downloaded and saved, you can name it to the appropriate naming convention, save it into a corresponding folder. You can open up the file and this is how it will look. Attach all appropriate receipts and credit card statements. After this, you can send this to your, uh, your manager or your director for approval. Once that is done, you can send it to Research Finance for review. If you have any questions about this presentation, please contact your research financial analyst or research finance at smh.ca. Thanks for watching.